Half, I think, tells the story very clearly from an economic point of view, right? Um, so, so you had the U.S., which, um, according to the goods data, now we don't have the services, uh, so I qualify what I'm saying, uh, but this tells us something, right, by destination. Um, U.S. was 18% of the goods part here, and it goes down to 15, right? In the meantime, uh, China, uh, what's Hong Kong, um, and PRC. So 18% maybe, something like that together, it's rising. Yeah? Um, if you look at this and, and, and Hong Kong, so 22%. So clearly there's some kind of a shift happening towards China, yeah? the good side. Now, is this greater, is this smaller? Uh, we don't know, but it's happening. Right? So, so that tells you, if you look at the investment data, particularly the data we can't measure properly, mm -hmm. you'll see a greater shift. So that is happening anyway, regardless of if anybody's doing anything. So, if you just take it simply from outside, leaving aside the politics of US-China or Philippine-China, this is going to happen more over time, right? Um, providing, you know, there's no structural breaks in this. So, um, this is the basis for talking about that relationship, I would have thought. And particularly with this other uh, thing that's happening, um, with the value chain moving out of China, right? So, so the Philippines, I can tell you uh, from the greenfield investment, it's only a limited part of this, but the Philippines is not a big player in that so far. Okay? So if we want to be part of a manufacturing-led uh, future in this region, we believe the value chain is important, we've got to, by definition, uh, have an entente cordiale, uh, to put it in the way the French might, with the major player um, uh, in the region. Right? And I mean, I would have thought that's important, but, but there are others. Japan is another, India is another, and so on. I mean, India, I understand, is prominent in the BPO industry. Um, if you go to BGC, uh, where I spent some time, there's this big building, Infosys. Now, that's a big Indian investor. So, so I think we've got to look not just at China, but some of the other uh, you know, uh, important regional powers here. Uh, Korea, Japan, India, China. I think these would be important targets for us uh, here. Uh, and uh, now, now, of course, there are tensions uh, on the political side, and those are beyond my expertise, but I would have thought you want to try to make sure that those things don't come into play on the economic side. Right? And this is just purely in terms of a country's economic interest. And, you know, the fundamental thing, I, I guess, in all the economics I've done, and I've, I've been doing economics for only one or two years, uh, <laughs> is that you trade with your geography. You trade and invest with your geography, right? And you can't escape your geography. Uh, particularly in today's interconnected world. It sounds like a cliche, but that's the truth. Right? And the, it's shown up in the data, right? Uh, so I think, I think that is the reality of, of the world we're living in. And the question on a, on, on a longer term question is, can you trade and invest with your geography in a way that you um, get gains from trade and investment? That, that is the more important issue. So you can't escape your geography. That's just a fact of life. So in Sri Lanka, where I live, uh, sometime or where I was born, uh, there's a big debate about you know, India and Sri Lanka, India relation. Okay? Uh, when I gave this talk in Sri Lanka a few weeks ago, uh, I told people uh, this number uh, includes India in a big way. It does not include Sri Lanka. So if Sri Lanka wants to attract direct Chinese investment, there will be some coming, perhaps. Uh, but round tripping from India to Sri Lanka will also be the same way in the Philippines, uh, we, we are so lucky to be close to China in, in the geographical sense. Uh, and we have an ASEAN-China agreement which could potentially be very useful for us. Uh, so working with our geography I think is very really important. Uh, trying to have uh, good economic relations seems important. But the critical question then is how does Philippines take advantage of this to grow its SMEs, to create jobs, uh, to export services in English, to have Chinese tourists, uh, in a way that outweighs uh, any potential negatives. I can imagine it would be uh, cheap Chinese goods coming here, uh, anti-dumping uh, and NTMs, uh, uh, potential issues of technology if there are, which could be uh, not having IP protection. So that, that, is, that is, I think, the fundamental question for me, not about how much of China, it's about how do we benefit here. I hope that answers the question. Thank you.